Please welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, Karen Pickering. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for coming out. I, I actually don't live that far away. I'm in Apple Valley, which uh, near the zoo, left of the baboon cage. So that's, that's our house, Oren Thompson, 1972. We're proud. Guys, I want to address something right away. First of all, I'm originally from Boston. I still have a bit of an accent because I don't sleep a lot and I go home a lot. So to Boston, right? And here's the thing. My name, I'm sorry, it's Karen. <laughs> yeah, you remember the thing. And, you know, I just like to address it right away because the night, well, look, 2017, that woman, the blonde woman with the wedge haircut, by the way, it was fake blonde, not the real thing, you know. <laughs> she had on a fur coat, a lot of jewelry, BMW, cross-parked, and handicapped. Goes in, talks to the manager. Life was never the same for me, I have to say. <laughs> My name is now an action verb, meaning to be bitch to death. That's as dirty as I get, a one swear word, thank you. $25 in the jar for mama for swearing, yeah. Well, Karen, yeah, well, what I love now about having the name is that during the day, I work at a phenomenal shoe store. There's nine of us in the Twin Cities, you know Shuler Shoes, thank you, that's the plug. But anyways, <laughs> what's really fun is that um, I'm a, one of the managers, you know? And when somebody comes in and they ask to speak to the manager and they see my name tag and it says Karen, things go pretty well for me. <laughs> Having a little fun. And why did I get the name? I, I was never supposed to be K-A-R-E-N. His mama used to spell it out screaming at me to come in at midnight because I was a bad kid. <laughs> yeah. My parents were 16 and 19 when I was born. Back in those days, it might have been a shotgun wedding if you follow. I'm the oldest, as my sisters say. She's the unplanned one. We're supposed to be here. She's a wreck. Well, my parents didn't know what to name me. My mom wanted to name me after her favorite pregnancy food. For nine months, she ate nothing but Sarah Lee pound cake. I was supposed to be Sarah Lee Pickering. Oh my God, I don't look like a Sara Lee. My God, they're so nice, you know. <laughs> so that's how I became Karen Lee instead, because my father was an athlete. He went to an Ivy League school and actually finished, you know. And um, yeah, he was, a, he's, he was, he's still around at 83. We just did our first four generation um, 5K race, you know, with um, all the kids. It was fun. But back to what's really funny. Yeah. So why am I in Minnesota, you guys? Because I married a native Minnesotan. Yeah, he's one of you, and on top of it, he's a Lutheran. <laughs> yeah. So this half-Jewish person, mom's Jewish, and my dad is Methodist, marries this Lutheran. We raised our children, Julus. <laughs> Last month was tough, you know. You get those Jewish holidays, you get Easter, and then you get Ramadan, and we like to just celebrate it all. The food is fabulous, you know. <laughs> but I, don't know, I want to talk about the marriage, because the kids are out of the house, and I married this guy, you know. He's eight years younger than me. Yeah, that's a way to do it, yeah. Yeah, I thought that meant he'd have more feelings than people in my generation, you know. Not true. He's a native Minnesotan. He, he didn't get feelings till COVID hit, you know? <laughs> what happened to you guys, man? I'm from the East Coast. We deal with feelings before they happen so we can get the hell out of the house, you know? I wasn't supposed to swear. 25 more bucks in the swear jar. There we go. Yeah. My man starts suddenly driving fast like the rest of you. This guy, this guy drove 20 in the right-hand lane on County Road 77 all his life, you know. Suddenly all of you are going fast. I'm so proud of you, I might stay. <laughs> but it used to be before COVID, our communication was I wasn't allowed to talk to him till at least noon. He's a commissioned salesperson. His customers got the best of the words before noon. And he would tell me that if I wanted to communicate with him 
before noon. Because by the way, I wake up at 5 a.m. this charged up, okay? Been doing it my whole life. He's kind of slow to the get-go. About April or May, he wakes up, you know? <laughs> he's cute, though, my man. Six foot four, he's got the wavy chocolate-colored hair and, like, the beautiful hazel eyes and dark skin. And I don't understand this because his whole family, his mother and his father, are blue-eyed and zits, you know what I mean, and blonde hair. It's unreal. That wasn't funny, but I had to share. <laughs> He's adorable. And when COVID hit, suddenly he was, like, dealing with his feelings. I couldn't handle it. I was the one that felt stuff. Now he's feeling stuff too much. All of you Minnesotans were. You know, you're talking to me at Target, 25 feet away at Target, some of you. Afraid the one germ on my head would, con you know, get over to your head, you know, that first part of COVID. And it was really funny because he said to me, I never realized how cool it is to feel things all the time. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck happened to you? I've been married 20 years to this guy and he's feeling all the time. I didn't know if I liked it because I was used to putting post-its up that said, Bring home the milk, honey. I've got new underwear, you know, and things like that. Was that too much for Mankato? <laughs> what I'm saying, the kids moved out. The spice is back, people. You too can be happy again. We held hands the first college night. The kids came home. I thought they were gonna vomit. I loved it. I loved their uncomfortableness because you know what you find when your kids go to college you find birth control that you didn't tell them about. Yeah. 300 condoms in a box in my son's room. <laughs> they weren't for him. He was an RA at college. He got them on Amazon. <laughs> and how I found out, he used the Amazon family card. <laughs> Please, no. Oh, it's awesome. Anyways, um, somebody flagged me when it's time. I'm having too much fun now. I might go till Tuesday with these jokes. It's just good. <laughs> yeah, so we're happily married. And I just want to tell you that there was paranoia in our house about COVID. I was the first one to go back to work after the seven weeks, you know, the semi-shutdown, whatever we were dealing with. I, it's not political. At our house, it was about the germs. I did not know that my husband was a germaphobe because I am a messy housekeeper. I don't think that floor had been washed till COVID hit. Because he was home now, he knew, now he could see. Our house, before that, you know, he likes to ride his bike 50 miles after work. I go do comedy. We come home for romance, etc. It's like a hotel, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. COVID comes, we're looking at the dirt that I haven't cleaned. Suddenly, I'm home alone with a box of Q-tips and, and bleach and I'm cleaning stuff, you know? When I went back to work though, the daughter had moved back in from Hamlin. She graduated, it's a wonderful thing, thank you. And here's... <laughs> Yeah, no, when they graduate in four years and you're still on the six year plan, waiting to turn 63 so you can finish your college degree because it's $10 a credit, your kids let you know what an idiot you are. <laughs> Thank you, that's new material, but those are my feelings. <laughs> so we're home cleaning the house, I'm going back to work. I come home after two days at the shoe store. Guess what? Mom has been thrown out of the house. They got a tent pitched in the backyard. Seriously, with a satellite bathroom, because they're afraid of my germs. So I went out to the backyard for about four nights, let them have their little festival, and I invited all my friends over that were in our pod. You had a pod, right, of people you'd stand closer than 35 feet, right, just to have friends. We had a tent for 10 people. I had five in there. There were germs. We had fun. I don't drink anymore, but I made sure my girlfriends were drunk and partying in the suburbs. You can check this out on the Nextdoor app, Apple Valley, they're still talking about it. <laughs> How much time, guys? I know that's very unprofessional. Two minutes? Six? Okay, sure, I'll finish in a week, thank you. <laughs> but I wanna just close on this because this is so important to let you know, my Lutheran was very concerned when we decided to stay permanently in Minnesota. We tried to relocate seven times and Five times a year I was going to Boston because I had family that needed me, or so I thought, and I would get out. So here's the deal. He wanted me to fall in love with you the way you are. he knows you are, the wonderful people that you are. So where does he take me to get to know you? Your Minnesota State Fair. Yeah, right? 
Why do you guys wait all year long to let your hair down, for God's sakes? I love you at the fair. I take two weeks off just to go observe what the hell you're going to do next. And the outfits you come in, the yoga pants cut off at the knee. Yeah, with the halter tops and the Crocs, and that's just the dudes. And then you get your demented nannies, and you take your kids over to the, over to the rides, and they're gone, and you're on your own. And you do things like my family does after a Red Sox game. You puke in unison in those little baskets because you've been, you've been drinking up a storm, you know? If you ever acted like this in the neighborhood, I would hug you, you know? It's just so much fun. My favorite experience at the State Fair, though, I ran into a woman by the name of Millie. She had her name on the back of her shirt, and she had a walker. And it said, my name is Millie, I'm 90 on her shirt. And she was going 90 miles an hour. She had two drink holders, and then she had like a backpack full of beer, you know? And I thought, I gotta follow this chick. My Lutheran's following me, it's like noon. And I followed her, and I'm tapping her. I go, Millie, where are you going? You going in a rush, you okay? Is it an emergency? I gotta go see Senator Klobuchar. I got something to tell her. Oh my God, I had to go follow her. What, what's she gonna tell her? Here's a beer, Amy, here we go. She gets up there, she raises her hand, I'm following her, I'm dying to know what she's gonna say. And Senator Klobuchar says, ma'am in the back with the two beers? <laughs> she's holding up a beer to Senator Klobuchar and she says, Senator Amy, I'm very concerned about your hairdo. <laughs> You've got the Hillary helmet hair, it's just not you. <laughs> you need to soften it up. You're not an idiot. We love you. <laughs> Senator Klobuchar, without me missing a beat, always the response, so nice. She goes, I'm gonna take that under serious consideration. <laughs> and you've seen her new hairdo. You blame that on Millie. Mankato, you've been fun. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>